which means the demand of interest for country finance is really, really huge. So you make a very correct and also very popular and competitive choice. So first of all, for the podcast and kind of league table ranking, so nowadays we go to any universities, open days, or student recruit event, basically, university league table ranking is something to be everything. So that's why we are very proud. Uh, we are ranking first in Scotland according to the guiding 2018 rank. So that's a detailed ranking for our currency finance in the UK <coughs> of 124 universities. So first in Scotland are based in the UK. Um, there are quite a lot of limitations for university table ranking. However, it's still one of the most influential and convincing proxy to measure the quality of the program provided by different UK universities. For instance, we measure how the quality of our new student, what's the average entry tariff for our accountancy and finance students in the first years. The higher the mark, so the better the rank the university will get. We also consider about the competition rate What's the proportion of students who compete the accountancy finance up here and compared with UK university as a whole? So you see a higher competition rate or lower job cover rate, the higher university work we get. We also consider about the job prospect. What's the proportion of the students will move to a professional job or move to further study six months after graduation? So we consider all those factors. I can say we are very, very proud of that one. We are working the top in the UK. Uh, because we know how hard we earn such credit, and I believe you, our future student, should be proud of it as well in the very near future, maybe next September, hopefully. And this data we get from the NSS survey, so national, international student survey. So each year, all the UK university, which we have taken the final years, so they will have a chance to take out the national student survey. So you should express your overall experience for your study for this particular program. So last year, we get about 90% of students study currency finance courses are very happy with this program. Uh, such a figure is well above UK average. So the past students actually they made a very, very correct choice. So the first section will talk about the university league table ranking. The second one will talk about our subject. I believe all of you came here is not because of the only hard wash university, also because you are interested in accountancy and finance. Maybe you have, you have different perceptions or maybe some stereotype of the accountancy and finance. So I want to express a key message for you. What does it mean, accountancy and finance? So the key message is, accountancy and finance is very, 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 and very industry and real world relevant. It's extremely practical. So I'll give you these examples. Anyone heard of this kind of scandals? Caroline, clubs? Did you raise your hand? So this is one of the high profile corporation clubs in the UK in the rest of the year, along with BHS, British Home Store, and rest of the House of Razors. So a key question that one, how could such kind of scandal happen again, again, and again? So actually, a company's finance courses will help you to understand it. For instance, you may ask these questions. Why such a company collapsed suddenly? No sign at all. This is an report we get from this company two years ago, six months before the company actually collapsed. This picture is from its CEO. Look at his smile. What kind of message you have? <laughs> Worry? <laughs> all very, very competent. Extremely competent, right? And if you look at these kind of accounting figures, the green one, or very, very positive message. This company is in good shape. Who knew that one? Six months later, this company suddenly collapsed. Hundreds of thousand jobs lost in the UK for this company alone. So how could you predict such an event happened? For this purpose, we have to understand the accounting information. How could you understand the financial data this company provided? If you take our accounting finance courses, we will help you to understand it. For instance, in Second years, you will know the cost for financial reporting. So this will give you some background on how to interpret such kind of accounting figures. In year three, you will get another two courses, auditing and management accounting. <coughs> Those two courses will deal with about accounting information procedures in the companies. 
for instance, how the managers or the senior manager of this company to take advantage of such your internal information to make decisions. In the fourth year, you have another course called corporate reporters. So it's more advanced level. So you will know more about principles and the procedures, how the companies want to communicate with the outsiders. Because fund managers or companies managers can control when to talk, who to talk, and to what extent you want to you to know about it. So with these courses, we'll help you to understand how the companies want to communicate with you via the accounting information. It's very, very helpful. look at another slide. The right slide about the share price movement for the car line. As you see, before the announcement of class, the company's share price is very temporary, it's very volatile. When the BBC reported the company had some trouble, you see the share price just collapsed. So one day they lost about 93.4% value within one day. So the question about us is how the market should react to such a news? What company share price 14 pence, not 13 pence, not 50 pence, not 60 pence? How the stock market to calculate such a fair value of these companies? <coughs> to understand these kind of questions, you must know security and pricing theory. How the sophisticated stock market or other security market incorporate all the value relative information in terms of hundred study. So in year two, you will know two courses, financial market theory and corporate financial theory. Those two courses will help you understand when the companies will make decision to raise the capital, how much from the equity market, how much from the debt market, how such a capital structure will be incorporated in the share price information. So this gives you some foundation of modern finance. In year three, we will have another course called international bond and capital market. So we will move away from the traditional stock market to a fixed income market like the bonds and also the foreign currency market. So we'll give you some comprehensive understanding of the security market and its pricing systems. The third slide also came from BBC. So Caroline Banks Corp for Government Health. Because this company is a joint company just collapsed. So the victim list is very, very long. Actually, you can see some very high profile, high street UK banks, such as HSBC because it lent a lot of money to these companies and this company collapsed, so they couldn't get the money back. At that time, so they asked the government to help. Please guarantee we'll get our money back. So interesting question about how could the investors, no matter shareholders or debt holders, how could they guarantee to minimize the risk they will face? To understand this kind of questions, so you should understand the investment and risk theory, especially the portfolio series. So in the third years, you will have some costs called financial derivatives. For instance, you know a lot of financial derivatives such as stock options, futures, or forward contracts. How we could use this kind of instrument to hack the risk. In the final year, year four, you get another two courses, risk management and equity market fund management. That's what in mind. So you will know more about the modern financial series. So how could we use different portfolios to diversify the risk? So in general, those courses will give you a better understanding how could we manage the risk exposure to any financial institutions. So we finish two parts. First one, we talk about the university for subject mid clinical ranking, and then we talk about the subject itself. <coughs> so right now we'll talk more about the program. So right now we have three programs available for our students, accounting finance, DF, and finance. The first one right now is by far the most popular. The uh, vast majority of our finance students take this program, MA, Accounting in Finance. So each year we get about 100 students, UG students. Um, but our applicant number actually is far beyond such kind of number of applicants, which means competition is, is fierce. So you can read our requirements, so we need a triple A's and one B for a score higher. And we also know who we want to look up for the best student in qualification, we are also want to recruit our students more appropriate. For instance, a student having a passion or have a real interest for the accounting and finance. All those people want to really take take it very seriously, want to work in the accounting or finance industry after they graduate. 
So one of the benefits of the program is because it's recognized by a lot of professional accountancy firms. For instance, ACCA. So I assume all of you may have heard this kind of ACCA qualification because this is one of the most popular accountant, professional accountants qualification in UK. To be qualified to be ACCA holders, you must pay, finish 14 exams, 14 professional exams. However, if you study MA accounting finance here, in theory, those four F1, two F4 exams will be automatically exempted if you can finish the program. You can fin get the exemption for another one, two, three, four, five, another five exams if you finish year two or year three, some very specific courses related. In other words, in theory, you get nine out of 14 professional exams if you finish the study here. So this will give you a huge advantage. And actually, nine out of 14, that's the maximum ACCA give to any UK university for exemptions. So you, if you want to think about accounting is your future career, so MA accounts and finance is absolutely the correct choice. We give you some structure of our program. So the blue one is for the accounting areas you need to study here. The yellow one is for the finance one. However, in your first year or second year, basically, you only take about financial reporting, marketing, and accounting, auditing for year one, two, three. Finance one, you have to take corporate finance and capital markets one. And then when you move to year three, year four, you have more choices. For instance, you find that I'm not a guy for accounting one. I like the numbers. I don't like the quality target analysis. I like the quality target. I like the models to predict the share price. And then, in year four, you can focus more on the other side of the finance. You can abound in the taxation or accounting theory, for instance, if I'm not interested at all. So this will give you some flexibility in your final two years. This chart gives you some kind of typical structure of the coursework. For instance, each semester you need to take four courses. Three are mandatory for year one, and one can be optional. When you move to year three or year four, the number of the compulsory courses will be small, and you have more choice to pick up the optional courses. So once again, this will give you some flexibilities. For instance, after two years, you find that, sorry, MA accounting and finance is not my choice. I want to change my program to something like the MA business finance or MA finance law, which is still possible, depending on what kind of courses you have finished. So this gives you another flexibility. So the four sections we mentioned about the, the department. So if you study accounting and finance, so you will study in AEF, accountancy, economics, and finance departments. So right now we get more than 1,000 undergraduate students, about 40 faculty members. So it's one of the largest departments within the school. We have very strong links to industry. One of the main reasons that's why we have a lot of pre previous graduates or alumni working in the investment industries. We have the research centers. All the research center advisors came from the industries, like the Standard Life or Aberdeen Asset. So if you Google Research Center for Finance Investment in our university, you can find a full name list of advisors. So they're all senior industry practitioners. We also have the trading and investment societies. So this is purely run by students, our MA accounting and finance students. So for instance, so they will have the weekly organization event to talk about the shares analysis. Uh, two weeks ago, they invite a very young and quite smart professional invest investment fund managers came to the campus to deliver a talk. Of course, I come on to just think about, okay, what kind of preparation you have, what kind of qualification, what experience you need to be a fund manager. So the overall experience for those people attending this kind of event is very exciting. They get expired. Let me think about, okay, industry, investment industry, this is something I really need to do for the rest of my life. This picture we get from the research centers in 2017. So we have the annual debate. So the topic of now debate is about ethical investment is pursued for shareholders' value. Because nowadays, ethical investment is quite popular, which means you can see about the environment, you can see about religion, some other issues. 
how could we consider all these factors to affect our investment decisions? So as you can see these pictures, all the audience is mixed with industry practitioners and also our final year undergraduate students. And then after the debate, so everyone have a say. You can have a vote. Do you agree or disagree with sentence? And surprisingly, after the debate, the vast majority of our students both say ethical investment is not the pursuit of the shareholder's value. So what's the priority of the shareholder value? Making the profit rather than looking after the environment. So this is the message we get for our own students after the, the debate. But it's very inspiring and interesting debate. So this month, we are very happy. So we get a new system called the Bloomberg Trading Room. Anyone heard of the Bloomberg Trading Room? Some of you? OK. So Bloomberg, basically, this is world leading financial service providers. So universities spend a lot of money to guarantee that we have this kind of trading room. Actually, we are the second university in Scotland to have such kind of trading room after the University of Strasbourg in, in Glasgow. So in the UK nowadays, 124 universities have a currency and finance degree, but only a few of them have such kind of trading room. So we read that one. The trading room is fantastic, but it's very expensive. So after this presentation, so you can go and visit the Bloom of Trading by yourself. So you can have some kind of latest database, and how could you use this kind of database to make the share price analysis. Another advantage of the Bloomberg is about the certificate. So if you are outsider or people from industry, you want to get the certificate, you need to spend about $1,000. But here, it's free for our students. So which means if you are studying here, you can get a certificate after several hours of self-studies. So this month, actually, we finished the registration yesterday. We found that one. Half of our fourth year UG students actually <coughs> very, very interested in this kind of training. So right now, they will get this kind of training for certificate. So I hope you, if you join us, so you should also have such a certificate. This will make your CV more competitive. This is our student profiles. As you can see, uh, we have a very diversified and also growing structure of communities. Compared with your current classmates and teachers, you face a very huge different environment in group universities. So basically, you know how to cooperate with people with different culture, language, or religion background. So I think that's a very vital lesson for you, and it's a very vital lesson for your future success, how to cooperate with people with different backgrounds. And then we'll talk about the graduate destination. So this information gives us ideas about what our graduates normally do after graduation. So this data from 2011 to 2017. So as you can see, the typical job titles and typical employers. So normally, a lot of our students get some kind of graduate scheme with accounting firm, like a training accountant. Maybe after two or three years, they will move to some financial companies to be an analysis. So this is one of the typical ways. We also summarize some of our previous graduates, some of our alumni. For instance, from the early stage, 1996, to people graduated from 2015. So they all graduated from MA Accountancy and Finance Fund. So if you look at the career path, it's quite similar. At the very beginning, they get some kind of a job in big four accounting firms. After three years, they move to financial industries, for instance, financial analysis. If they're lucky, or if their performance was fantastic, they may move to some top job like the fund managers, like the Dave Duken, right? Right now, he's one of the most powerful and influential investment managers for Stanford Aberdeen. So this will give us ideas. What's your job, or what's your future job, or what's your children's job? Would like to play like that when it comes to finance here? Um, that's it. Um, so thank you for coming here. So I wish you good luck. So if any of you are interested in Bloomberg, so please wait outside. So I mean, let you know how we go to the Bloomberg training lab. Okay. So someone else maybe can return to any more business. So we have another academic staff standing there. They are going to have to answer any questions. Anymore.